This can be 220. And this can be 280. Just run it to make sure they're all correct and in the same spot. Yep, so. But we do need to, however, move these down. So make them at 350. And then change their names. So instead of submit, we're going to have this as clear. And then this as query. And then this is exit. Alright, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do something that looks a little like controls. And dot button clicked equals action. And for the sake of time, just so that I uh, don't have to worry about um, running over my time, I have it copied. Basically what action is going to be is action is going to be a sub or a subclass that we are going to call on, which is going to do um, further complex work. So there it is, and I'll explain this line by line since I can explain faster than I can type. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare an if statement in this, and we're going to say control dot last button clicked, which queries the last button that the uh, the user clicked, and if that is enter, then it's going to grab all of the information from the text box, text boxes, and then put it into an array. Um, this is an array much like the one that we had discussed in uh, tutorial 13. Basically, our root is num clients. And you can see that as right there. It's going to query it. So since we have nothing in our root right now, um, it's going to query as one. And so uh, client, or actually it's going to query as zero. So client zero is going to have a first name of whatever's in uh, the text box. It's going to have a last name of whatever's in the last name text box. It's going to have a birth date of whatever's in the birth date text box. And the same thing for the position. After we do that, then we're going to call on a method inside the file library called append contents. What append contents does, append contents allows you to pull up a program, and here it is again, we have the program.directory. The reason why we do program.directory is because um, you don't know where the the user that downloads your program is going to be installing the files to. So this makes it so that regardless of where they install the files, it'll always pull up the correct directory, and then you can pull up whatever you want inside that directory. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, what a pin contents does is it will pull up the file that you ask it to, and it will add whatever text that you want it to add to the very end. So this the employee, um, the employee uh, sub -num, con num content clients. Hey, I can't talk today. Um, the employee sub num clients would, uh, in effect, it would do the same thing as if you were to type in text window dot write line employee sub -num clients, and it'll write that to the file and then save it and then close it. Once we do that. Uh, we also need to increase the amount of clients that we have because we have upped it. So we do num clients equals num clients plus one. That increments it by one to show that we have an additional one. And that will also write it using file.write line to that file on line one. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is that the file.write line uh, method overwrites anything on the line that you're choosing with whatever you want to add. So it's zero right now. If we were to run through this and add a, add a client, it would increment it by one, so the zero would go up to one, and then it would input one over the zero. It's as easy as that. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clear all of the text boxes, just so that they have a clean slate once they've entered it, and that'll also give us a, a visual cue as to when it's finished processing. The clear button will do the exact same thing. Um, it will clear all of the text boxes regardless of what's in it, but it won't save any of it. And then we have the query button. The query button is the most complicated one that we have. Um, it's saying that uh, the query can only be run if num clients does not equal zero, and the, uh, there is actually some form of text in 
the uh, the enum text box. If this isn't passed, then it will so go ahead and skip down to L the else if for the exit button, and if that isn't passed, then it'll go down to the else. <coughs> like I said, our, I, I should at least tell you guys that um, the uh, small basic programming language is very stack-based. It'll go from whatever's at the top all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't interpret um, skipping around too well. That's why it's a very basic programming language that will be great for beginners, but other than that, I mean, it's it's got some limitations. Now, once we do that, and basically what it's going to do is if this is passed and we go through it, it's going to get empnum equals the get, con uh, get text box text from enum, so it's going to grab the employee number from this text box, and it's going to assign that variable, and then employee uh, empnum, which is going to be the employee number equals file dot read program directory clients dot txt empnum plus two. The reason why we do plus two is because say we have employee zero. Well, the text the text file only starts on line one, so that's plus one just to get it onto the text file, and then the uh, the first line of the text file is always going to be occupied with how many employees that you have so you need to add another one to start where you are and this is employees as well as this and this so once we gather that once we gather that it'll plug all of that information into the uh, the array and it's actually a very intelligent process where it automatically puts in the uh, the second dimension of the array like we have here the first name last name birthday and so on because it saves it with that information if you wanted to see what that information is i'll go ahead and show you here in a second so when in doubt um, when they click on Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, basically what it does is it'll um, append all the text of these text boxes with that second dimension that this will plug in automatically for you. And lastly, but not least, we will go ahead and clear the employee number uh, text field, and that'll be that for the uh, the query button. It's basically looking up a an employee by their employee number. If you wanted to do more coding, you could, and you can make it so that they can query it by their first name, their last name, their birth date, whatever, but that's a lot of code, and I don't have enough time in this tutorial to do that. Um, basically, and then we have the, the exit button, which is last, and we just have program.end. That is the easiest. Program.end will terminate the program regardless of what's going on, so that's an easy way to close the program without having to use the exit, or without having to use the X up at the top. And then if none of these pass, we're going to do graphics window dot show message invalid operation is going to be the text, and invalid operation is going to be the title. And you can see that by clicking on the method itself, and it'll show you show message is in the format of text and then title. So when we it should run just perfectly fine. Let me go ahead and hit the F5 button. Nope. No, oh, this is submit. All right, it brings it up. And you can tell that we're going to need to do some adjustments on this. But nevertheless, we should be able to do John Doe 01, 01, 01. This is from our previous tutorial, and his position is district manager. And when we click Submit, it'll do its thing, and then it'll clear those, just like it did. And then John's employee number, since he's the first one, will be zero. So we can enter zero and query him. Hmm. Okay, so I figured out my error right there. Um, the reason why is because you can't have the text file open while you're appending the content. Um, if it's being controlled by another file or by another program, the uh, the contents cannot be appended. So all I did was I closed the program and then I re-entered the exact same information. I closed Notepad, that is. I re-entered the exact same information and then I put, click Submit and now when you hit zero, he queries right up. So I didn't change any code or anything, that's why I'm not showing.